try and keep this succinct and uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the games I've been cranking through lately. I found myself uh, trying to accelerate my way through the games uh, to get to some sort of stage where I thought I was caught up. <laughs> Whatever caught up means. Uh, you're in this, this whole uh, idea of doing this chronological walkthrough because I had inadvertently well, I didn't have the idea until after I'd started, and so I played TBL, the Blitzkrieg Legend, and I played RAF and uh, Battle of Britain, and then um, I started playing DAC, and all those were, you know, just accidentally kind of in line. And when I thought about this idea, I was like, well, you know what, I, I just go back and I'll just play, you know, Case Yellow, because that's all it really, and not Case Yellow, I Case White, because that's all it really matters. And then, of course, the more I read, the more I thought about it. I was like, well, you know, I really need to do, do the Balkan campaign. And well, if I'm going to do the Balkan campaign, I might as well do the Norwegian stuff. If I'm going to do the Norwegian stuff, well, I might as well do the Winter War. And my grand, my, my pressure kept building up on myself to, because I really want to get started on, on this guy. Oh, no. I don't know if you can see that there. Wherever he is. There, War of the Suns. This dude here. And, um... Because that's a big game, that's going to take a while. And I think what I might do now, I've got a couple of guys who are mildly interested in playing, so we'll uh, we'll see if I can get them excited about playing that game. And we'll, we'll, we'll do something. So what I thought I'd do is not review these games, but at least just give you a feel for... And I'm sorry, that's, um, I'm kind of fidgety here because I've got no... Uh, the air conditioning is working, but I have no lights, and my fan is... Uh, Put it's hanging out from the ceiling. Smoke and sparks are bad for electrical things. So, I thought I'd give you a quick uh, idea on some of the stuff that I've played recently and uh, a feel for a couple of other topics that I'm starting to become more interested in and I'm, I'm curious about uh, doing something, uh, playing more of in the near future. Let me just do this here. All right, so. Uh, I play Case Wyatt and I've posted some video on that and I've posted some AAR stuff and I think as well you know uh, we need to look at the Norwegian situation and winter war uh, so I found this command magazine game called Strike North and it was one uh, that I, I chose mainly because I really wasn't that excited about the Norwegian uh, going on in the uh, World War II era and I and uh, so I thought, well, you know, I'll get something simple and I'll get something that, that you know, maybe that is easy to, to deal with. So, it ends up the Command uh, Magazine game uh, is not exactly the most straightforward game, but it's so simple <laughs> that I just miss things. I was, I was trying to make it more complicated. Too much OCS. Don't, go, don't come off OCS and go to a Command Magazine game. Uh, <clears throat> so I played that, and I, it's okay. I think that the the alternative history scenarios and some of the other things that are going on there are are really cool. There's um, there's lots of interesting stuff. I'm sorry, I'm just changing. I'm just stopping the music. Uh, there's lots of interesting things in the scenarios, but the historical scenario, which is the one that I was most interested in. It's really tame and pretty lame, actually. Uh, it has this, this sort of hidden movement uh, element to it, which doesn't make it very solitaire friendly, but it does give it uh, a little bit of tension. So uh, give, that was okay, but if uh, if the Germans are aggressive enough, they can get that game over and done with with in, with, in a handful of turns. Uh, assuming I'm playing it correctly. And there's a good chance I'm not, but it certainly gave me a very stark feel for the abject power that was brought to bear on that area, uh, but very little else. I, it, it, you know, the, the units all had their names on them, uh, their, their unit designations, and you know, the British intervened and the French intervened and they did their thing. And the game's really structured around uh, the the uh, the supporting efforts up until uh, Case Yellow kicks off because really there's not a lot that the French or the British could do uh, once that happened so that that makes 
perfect sense to me. But yeah, there still wasn't much of a game there. There wasn't a lot. Uh, it wasn't a simulation. It wasn't necessarily super fun. And I didn't really learn a whole lot. Uh, World of Fjords. That was an expensive purchase. And uh, I probably would have been better off with uh, buying the GMT title for uh, another 20 bucks And uh, going from there. Okay, so this guy, uh, you may have seen Marita McCurr played. I've uh, posted this video on it. I played it twice. Uh, first time I played it, uh, basically, I don't know how I got it uh, wrong. I don't know what I did necessarily wrong, but the Italians just had a romp. Um, and I felt like that was not right. <laughs> and everyone told me, yeah, you're, you're screwing it up somehow, and you need to show, you need to show, me, uh, show me how you did that. And uh, I'll post that stuff, but... I don't think anybody wants to see, um, uh, you know, see a game that's play been played incorrectly or, or whatever. But I, I, I'm not sure exactly what I did wrong. But uh, I, I know the only thing that was truly, uh, uh, probably wrong was tactics. Uh, I was very tentative and very shy and delicate with the Greeks, and we should have been way more aggressive and punchy in the, in the mountains, and that would have made a big difference. So. The reset uh, was great fun. Uh, we, uh, because of all that, we kind of discovered this gamey issue <clears throat> with the first version of this this title, which is what this is. Uh, but I tell you what, for four or six hundred counters, it really covers off. <clears throat> excuse me, covers off on all the details of the game, of the era, and of the campaign. Uh, lots of uh, political influence. Uh, it, it takes into account. Um, a lot of shipping issues. It takes into account uh, uh, the uh, I the intervention is is actually quite well done, but uh, the the VP the way it accounts for VPs is broken. So uh, and I mean that if it is broken and it was recognized as being broken, it's broken. So I'm not being a whiner. It's just broken. It doesn't work. And so uh, you know really what you have to do is just pick a date that the Germans intervene and just roll with it from there or pick up a, a, a victory point total and, and go with it and then once the Germans intervene man it's hell on wheels it's fun uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of mayhem that's going on uh, with the Germans just whacking the crap out of the Yugoslavians and the Greeks fight a desperate battle I could see how if I played it a third time which I almost did I almost set it up and played again that's, that's how much I liked it uh, I just I just didn't want to go through the tedium of, uh, of the setup charts and all the rest of it uh, to to do that. But I would definitely play this again um, as a as an experiment uh, in tactics and strategy for that campaign with some caveats on victory point accumulation and someone smarter than me working out how that should be done. So that's that. Uh, this guy, this is an ending up uh, being a long video. So Winter War could not be a more stark contrast uh, between it and Strike North. Uh, tr particularly from a, uh, a rules perspective, wow. Just, there's probably, I think there's like four pages of rules in this thing, or maybe five. And it is tight, dude. Uh, it is so nice, uh, just refreshingly clean and good. And... Uh, you know, this game, uh, I think, came out in 76 or 78, or something like that. And, I mean, it's it's streets ahead of the the um, Command Magazine approach. And I think it's just fundamentally, philosophically, completely different. I think uh, Strike North was a 96 edition or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have, to, I have to look it up, but anyway, um, so, um, great, I'm very uh, intrigued by this game already, and uh, I had one chap uh, post on online somewhere on either the video or the, the vlog or somewhere saying how he travels with this game, and I can see why, There's, there are a myriad of uh, opportunities to uh, tweak with strategy, tweak with setup, tweak with where you uh, you know make your focus as the Soviet player with all of and, and with uh, the way the rules are done it captures enough of the history without being one of these massively uh, uh, you know three four hundred counter games that just you know crushes your soul over over a conflict that was very 
uh, very deadly, but it was actually a fairly brief uh, affair. It's a cool uh, game, a uh, title on that that I will play at some point, A Frozen Hell. Uh, I've got some modified rules for it because I know there's some issues with it that have been expressed on the TCS board in uh, CSW. But that's an 80 hour, probably a 70 hour exercise of gameplay. And I'm not. I'm just not down for that right now. I, w I want to get. Uh, I want to get to the point actually where we move to the east front, and we start looking at uh, what we're going to do with our World War II chronological play on the east front. What title will we play, or titles will we play to capture Barbarossa as the first uh, thing? So we want to run through. Run through from June to December, January, maybe the counteroffensive, uh, February time, March time frame, uh, uh, for forty two, and see uh, and see how all that comes together, and then we'll work out from there what we do with the East Front titles and things like that. That's going to chew up the the bulk of uh, of the walkthrough for forty two until we. Uh, until we do some other things. I've got a few ideas on uh, some of the other titles I'd like to play. So, time out on World War II.